Now, on the back of some of these trends that you've been speaking about, there was a Cisco study that was done that found that 66% of employees expect their organizations to allow them to use any device to access corporate networks anytime, anywhere. 66% <laughs> of employees also said they take a job with less pay but more flexibility when it came to device usage, access to social media, and mobility instead of a higher paying job with less flexibility. So what does this actually mean for the way we develop and administer training and learning within organizations? Um, Joe, start off by telling us what kind of progress you've made when it comes to social learning, collaboration, mobile learning. What types of tools and techniques, non-traditional tools and techniques have worked? It's interesting because we're actually in that process right now of looking at uh, various collaboration tools. So I think it goes back to something Ricardo said, that, th that there's this, you know, when you go to learn something, think about when you want to learn something, what do you do? You don't go to your learning management system. You know, you're not going to go in and log in and say, okay, what's there? You go to Google, you go to, you go to the internet, you just search, and, and that's top of mind. And to think that we're going to get employees to log into some system and then see what's in there, that, that's a challenge uh, to do. So you have to kind of, again, go where the mindset is going and, and where folks are going to get their information. So as a result of that, you want an overlay uh, of some type, um, a, a tool, and there are internal intranets that will do that. So uh, that will say, if I search this, not only is it going to grab everything that's outside of the system, the ecosystem that you've built, um, but what's inside? Because obviously I want, it, I want not only the information I need, but I need to know how it relates to what I'm selling or what we're offering. So we want that overlay tool. And not only do we want that overlay tool, bring in a white paper, bring in a piece of marketing collateral or business collateral or a product sheet or whatever it might be, a sales play. Um, I also want to then have a network uh, that I can collaborate with my peers to say, who's read this? Who's had success with this? What's the threaded discussion around this particular topic? And be able to then kind of contribute to that process on a secure network, you know, something internal. So there's this kind of hybrid intranet, intranet kind of model that's evolving that's going to be an overlay uh, that will assemble and aggregate that content to what Tom was saying. You have to be able to kind of find that content and be able to serve it up um, as needed, when needed, you know, that just in time, just enough uh, kind of component of things. And know what people are touching, know what's tracking, know what's hot. Uh, you know, you might have the greatest initiative in the world, but no one's touching it. On the other hand, people are searching out this other piece of content that might have been posted by an employee or you know someone in the field, uh, and that's the one that's getting the most play or getting the most exposure. So to be able to pick that up, recognize that, leverage that, and then uh, kind of play that out within the organization is critical. Mm -hmm. And Tom, you also really drove learning using the power of technology and social media at PwC. Tell us a little bit more about some of the work that you did, what you impl implemented, and what worked. So, so with technology, it's, it's, it's an, an, ev an evolutionary process versus a revolutionary uh, process because of the uh, balancing it with the cultural norms within your environment. So my con comments are, are within uh, the realm of what works at PwC and what we're allowed to do. And fortunately, we were allowed to do quite a bit. Um, we, we started out, uh, if I go back a few years, we started out with the idea that we wanted to be mobile. So we created a platform called Mobile IQ, uh, which was able uh, basically to break, take content, break it down so it's used on, a, on a, a universal handheld. So an iPhone or an Android uh, platform, no matter what, we were able to, to do that. It started in the early days with uh, MP3, you know, type content, breaking it down into and basically snackable bytes. Uh, and we started to sort of use the word snackable, make it more snackable, and figure out what that, that measurement was. Uh, we had a greater push because uh, in PwC, uh, we uh, recruit quite a few people. Uh, the average age in the firm is uh, 28 years old. Uh, so the average age of the partnership is 37 <coughs> years old. So it's a young population, more dynamic, and the expectations are very, very high. Uh, so that enabled us to move forward. We also had expectations that when we were on campus, or even in the experience market, expectations were changing and that people are willing to be more mobile. 
they're not looking for that long-term career. So the, the nature of how they learn and what they acquire while they're with you uh, seem to uh, take on a greater significance. So the idea of creating a mobile platform that works on, on your phone, uh, changing the way we think about our uh, learning management system uh, from being just a source where you have curricula-based content to actually adapt it so that it incorporates a range of assets so that you can in effect create more of a pull versus a push uh, to, the, to the site. We found those two things to be very uh, easy to do uh, within our environment to continue to kind of uh, push that. Uh, when this spring we were, in, we were actually experimenting with uh, the, the adaptive learning algorithms and actually taking content to see if we can actually engage in that activity, and we had a success with it, especially, especially around technical content uh, where it is structured. Um, so those, those things are, that are in play. Uh, spark sites, uh, you know, Joe, you mentioned people are used to going for the search. What we also found is they're very social, so they're used to going uh, out within our own social network and going, hey, I'm working on this, I need something, what do you have? And getting uh, accustomed to the fact that you know, within the course of, of an hour, you could get 30 people to giving you advice on things you could use and you, you, what you can source. So that enabled us to push farther uh, so that uh, if we, there is something of value, uh, we've created interactive PDFs and we, we consider that a learning asset. We've uh, actually, obviously, get abstracts and some of the other book things that are out there to show relevance. Uh, using open source content and bringing that in as, as we looked at uh, business acumen, uh, those types of things were, were there, as well as changing our models and, and recognizing that with the advancing of technology, it's actually re was making us rethink what was really needed as part of our formal curriculum. As we found that uh, what was driving us is the need for speed. So be out there, adapt your, your workforce and be able to be flexible and adapt that formal structured curricula is too slow. So we needed to you know, sort of break that bottleneck and move into the, this range of this use of, of assets. Even the traditional things, it's just as webinars and things like that we use uh, as well. The latest one that we started to pick up on is, is uh, PwC is a Google environment. So uh, using Google Hangouts, right, uh, has influenced the way we engage. So we use Google Hangouts for coaching conversations. We use Google Hangouts to uh, with Google Docs to uh, look at content and explore the way people work. Because it's becoming less formal, less structured, it's more about how people interact and how do you then, uh, which is another advancing concept with this, was the nature of with technology, how do you advance the way people learn in the course of their work? So that you marry learning and work together because of the need for that speed and the need to measure acquired competency. Uh, in a given area, we, we looked at, at those things as well. Mm -hmm. So that's just a range of things that we've done. Definitely. Ricardo? Yeah, I'd like to touch on the collaboration piece of it, uh, which I think it's a great example of, you know, you really start with the need, with the culture, and then the, the tool is something that can support that. Um, you know, in a previous job that I had, we created a, a lot of communities of practice, and that was very successful because we created an environment where people could come together every so often, facilitated by HR, but really owned by the business. You know, people had a need for that content. They had a need to get together globally and, and talk about topics. Uh, so we brought in subject matter expert, experts. We had people sharing within the teams. Um, with that structure in place, and then it started growing from there, and then it triggered the need for the tool, right? Where do you start posting the content? Where do you um, access the videos afterwards? Where do people go and get in touch with one another? So that all started growing um, organically after we put the process in place. So I think that's a good example of where, you know, it, it really works after you have something in mind and, and you have that culture shifted to make it work. Um, so as far as mobile goes, we, we started in the past with uh, developing for mobile. I, I don't think we were as, were as sophisticated as uh, PwC in the past. I think we, we came into issues around uh, making it work for every platform, right? If it is a MP3 or a video, there are platforms out there that adjust pretty quickly to um, 
to whatever device it's playing at. But when it comes to e-learning, uh, it wasn't as simple to us. Maybe it's more sophisticated now, but we, we got into issues where sometimes it played well with one device, but sometimes it didn't resize well for another, right? So uh, had bandwidth issues and things like that. So I think that's a, a watch out when it comes to, to mobile. It's really starting with the any mind always and thinking of you know, how, how are you pl planning to use your content and, and planning well to make sure that it actually happens.